You cannot serve both God and the devil. Oh, wait. That don't say the devil. That says you can't serve God and money. He didn't. I would think that Jesus would say right there, you can't serve God and the devil. But he didn't even put, he said his competition isn't even, is not even with the devil. The competition is against the bag. Because people oftentimes make the bag their God. Welcome to the plug. So I'm excited to talk about this topic that we are talking about today. I want to welcome the online audience. Thank y'all for watching. Y'all wave to the online audience. Y'all wave, y'all wave, y'all wave. Yo, if you all haven't, make sure that you follow us. You all can um, follow us on YouTube as well. Like, subscribe, go to the plug. That YM. Um, the plug YM stands for the plug young money. All right. So make sure you go follow us. Okay. It's for youth ministry. Um, but I thought YM just. All right. Cool. Um, but make sure you all like, subscribe, and make sure you all share as well. And if you get something good from any of the messages, you know what you should do? You should go back and listen to it again. You should go and take notes on it. You should go and re-listen because that's really how you get stuff in you, just not by the first time, okay? Just not by the first time. Yeah, how many people watch movies over and over again? Yeah, I ain't, man, I ain't going to lie. I don't like doing that with movies, honestly. If, after I've seen a movie once, like, I'll be done with it. But if you all watch movies over and over again like a lot of you all do, make sure it, it's okay to go back and listen to the word over and over again, all right? It's, like, very beneficial. There's some sermons that I've listened to literally like seven to ten times. The same message over and over again. Now, not my message because that would be a little crazy for me to go back and listen to myself that many times, but other people. So um, we're jumping into a new phase, uh, a spinoff of our Entrusted series, and we're really going to be talking about money, right? Because I think money is an important topic to talk about, right? How many of y'all think money's important? Y'all looking like, I don't know if I should answer this or not. Like, how many of y'all think money's important? Make some noise if you think money's important. How many of y'all like money don't matter? Make some noise. <laughs> and the two people that make noise in the same family, too. <laughs> it was <laughs> I, okay, money is an interesting topic, right? Like, money is something that we talk about all the time, and sometimes we don't even know that we'd be talking about it, all right? Like, money is something that is very valuable, and it affects us all, and we have these conversations either directly it affects us or indirect conversations. Let's think about it like this, right? Indirectly, how does money talk to us? So, how many people, parents, they work? How many people, parents, they work? Let's do some math, okay? Who likes math? Who, who's good at math? You good at math? All right, do some addition for me, okay? Do some addition. There's how many hours in a day? I'm talking to her and her alone. Yeah, give her the mic. Yeah, yeah, thank you, No, Get her the mic. Yeah, yeah. How many hours are in a day? 24. Okay, 24. How many, how many hours do most people work in a day? I'm talking to her and her alone. Her and her alone. Eight, I guess eight. eight. Say that again? Eight, eight hours. Eight hours a day? Okay, eight hours, so 24 hours in a day. Eight hours we spend towards working. How many hours are you supposed to sleep? Let's say that. How many hours are you? How many? I, I, man, I think that y'all just not following the direction. Um, I'm talking to her and her alone. <laughs> We're having a A and B conversation. I'm not saying that other part. All right? You're supposed to get eight hours. Of eight? Rest. No, it was like seven to eight, right? Seven? Seven hours. Do most people sleep seven hours? No. No. Let's, let's just say six. Let's say six. Okay. Let's go. Let's say. How many?
many hours you supposed to sleep? <laughs> Maybe it's eight? That means 10, 11, 12, 1, 2, 3, 4. Eight is a long time to sleep. Good night. Okay, anyway, let's just go with seven. Let's go with seven hours, okay? Um, do most people have to drive to work? Do most of you all parents drive to work? Yes. So how long does it take usually for them to drive? <laughs> there and back. Let's just say an hour. So how much time we got? One hour, and then we said seven hours of sleep, and then we said eight hours of work. How much is that? I'm talking to her and her alone. Sixteen. Sixteen hours? Okay, so we got some more time. Then after people get off, you know, what do they usually do? You know, they do house stuff, right? They just Clean. do stuff around the home. How, let's just say two hours of that, right? You, where we at now? What, with all the time? Yeah. 18 hours, okay? Then you eat dinner. That don't take too long, like right? 30 minutes? <laughs> yeah. But then you got to clean up as well. 30 minutes too long to eat? Chill. Five? Y'all are animals. Why does it only take five minutes? Okay, and then you got to clean up and stuff like that. Um, and then let's just throw entertainment. You know, how much time do you spend after eating, after homework and stuff is done? Entertainment time, right? Three hours? Three hours? Okay, let's just, we're going to stick on that on another day. Just know that there is something called the E to E ratio, the education to entertainment radio. I mean, ratio. And if your entertainment ratio is higher than your education ratio, that means that you're going down in life. Oh. It is. No, education, is, education hours is not school. That's not education. That's called school. They're not educating you on life things that you need to know for life, all right? We can all agree. So where are we at? We said entertainment, three hours. We said family time, eating, cleaning up, one hour. So three, one. We said house stuff, two hours. We said sleeping, seven hours. We said job, eight hours. And then traveling to the job, an hour. Where are we at? Yeah, 21 uh, hours and 30 minutes. 21 hours and 30 minutes. Yeah. No, wait, no, you changed no. the time. Seven, eight. I think that's 23. Yeah, no, it's only 21. 23, and then one hour just to do whatever, right? Okay. What? Thank you. Thank you for the math. I appreciate that. What is this telling us is the most important thing about life? Based on the amount of time that we spend, what is the most important thing? If we had to look at somebody at our parents' life, and we say, man, they spend one hour traveling to work and back, and then they spend eight hours at work, that's nine hours out of the day. What does that tell us about life? That jobs are really important, right? Why are jobs important? That's how we make what? That's how we make what? So money. Indirectly, we have been told that the most important thing about life is money. Well, it is an, that's, that's the indirect statement, right? We look at somebody's life, it's like, man, you spend nine hours a day based on work, based on job, not work, based on our job to make money. That's a lot of time, all for that dollar bill. Now, let's keep on going back to, we didn't even talk about how much time they may spend with God. Let's look at the amount of time that we spend chasing the check versus chasing God. We'll get to that in a minute, but that's, a, that, that's interesting, right? How many of y'all spending, or your parents, let's just talk about your parents. Let's talk about somebody else's parents, all right? Because I don't want them watching this and emailing me. Um, how many of them spend nine hours a day Chasing God. Nobody. <laughs> Nobody's parents, right? So indirectly we say chasing the bag 
is more important than chasing God. Let's just keep on going. Let's keep on going. Um, we also hear conversations about stuff. And a lot of the conversations are about money. Man, gas prices is going so high right now. Man, inflation. Man, you see how much it costs for the groceries? Girl, we ain't buying that right now. You see how much that costs? I ain't spending that on you. Like, you always want to go out to eat. We got food at the house. Like, nah, we ain't. Like, I, I'm not going to lie. It seemed like my whole childhood, everything was about money. Like, I, re I remember one time I wanted to get some shoes, and these were like, my parents was cheap, dog. I ain't going to. I'm sorry. I love my parents. They're great. But, man, they was tight. They was tight with the money. And they was like, you can spend, nah, this was crazy. Now, I didn't even think about it. You can spend $50 for a new pair of shoes. And I'm like, I'm like, 50? I'm like, that was bad for the type of shoes. The type of shoes that I wanted didn't cost 50. They didn't cost $50. <laughs> they was like 80, you know, like Air Forces was 80, right? Like I wanted. And so my parents, I'm like, this is just a little over. It's like $60. Like, can we please? No. I'm like, bro, you got to go get a job. You got to everything. A lot of it was about money. Any other parents? You all's parents or guardians like that? Some of y'all, okay. Oh, this Cobb County, they rich. They rich over here. They rich over here. I got you. I got you. Okay, not 50. I'm just saying in general, the talk, the, the talk is about money, right? Um, you even see this kind of conversation would even happen with Jesus and his disciples, right? You remember we read last week, we, we read over the parable of what? No, it actually wasn't a parable. My bad. It was actually a true story of what? What did the fish and the loaves? Thank you. Thank you. We had one person that paid attention. You don't loathe the loaves, right? We, had, we talked about the fish and the loaves. And remember that there was one thing that was said, and this could show that the disciples were really concerned with money. John 6, 5 says this. When Jesus looked up and saw the great crowd, remember this, coming towards him, he said, Philip, where shall we buy bread for these people to eat? He asked this only to test him. So Jesus said, where are we going, how are we going to buy enough food for all these people? But Jesus asked him to test him. Okay, he tested him. Then he said this, Philip answered, it would take more than half a year's wages or earnings. I would have to work for more than half a year to buy enough bread for each one to have a bite. So even the disciples were worried about getting money. Like, yeah, we want to do this for God, but man, I would have to work a whole year to be able to do this. Now, question. Did Jesus care about the bag? Who thinks Jesus cares about the bag? I got two hands in the back. How many people think Jesus don't care about the bag? <laughs> Shut up. He's going to say he is the bag. <laughs> Okay, we got to read our, bib our Bibles a little more. Jesus did not care about the bag in this story. He didn't need money to make the loaves and the bread happen, like the fish and the loaves. He multiplied it. He didn't say you got to go get money to go do it, right? But Jesus actually really does care about the bag. And we're going to talk. You know one of the most important topics that Jesus talked about was money? That was the biggest topic that Jesus talked about. It wasn't about, like, it wasn't about getting saved. He talked about money. A whole bunch. Like, a whole bunch. And we're going to look at this very deeply. But then we have how people talk about money to us directly. Okay? How do people directly talk to us about money? How does it influence us? There's, like, one thing in particular. Talif, what is it? 
what did you mention earlier? Huh? Money. Huh? A lot of money. How do people influence us to think oh, about music. money? Do what? Music. Do music, right? I feel like that's all rappers talk about. Yeah. Like, let's just play this real quick and let's just see, like, what they be talking about. I had to do a lot of editing. Need a check, I got a check. Put my money in the grave. I feel like <laughs> I feel like I ain't gonna lie I feel like that gotta be the number one topic that rappers talk about money 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 if you ain't got no bag you know you got they don't even do the uh, money phones no more. Like, that's lame. That's little money. If you got the money, you got to do the whole sleeve, boy. You got to really flex that thing one time, right? Money is like one of the biggest topics that we talk about, especially in our community, right? In our community, that's what we talk about, flexing. I got, like, when I was in the world, I remember one of the biggest ways that my partners would flex is they would go to the club and they would buy, have bottle service and they would start throwing money, right? Me, I ain't gonna lie, I'm cheap. I'm down there. <laughs> Put my foot on it, I'm, I'm making sure that money ain't getting away. I was, right? Cause I wasn't about to go throw me no money in the air, heck no. I ain't, no. <laughs> now, I'm not saying that money is bad. I'm not saying that money is bad at all. Money is neutral. Money is neither good or bad. Money is neutral. It just depends how you use it, right? It's just like a... Yo, 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 what's going on over there? Y'all straight? Appreciate it. It's almost like a gun. A gun is neither good or bad. I, oh, okay, people are like, we talking about guns in church? <laughs> like, guns are neither good or bad, right? Okay, let's use biblical weapons. An arrow. An arrow is neither <laughs> good or bad. It's the person that pulls the arrow or trigger, right? It depends on how it's used, right? Because if I use a gun to go, go kill a deer and feed my family, that's not bad. But if I use it, to go rob a bank and stick somebody up, then that's bad. It's the same way with money. Money is neither good or bad, but it, it's just a tool and it matters how you use it or how you view it or your motives behind it. Money is, not, is neither good or bad, it's a tool. But when money becomes the main focus of your life, when money consumes you and, it, and now you believe it's your protector, it's your provider, it's your all in all and it becomes your security goal, it's your self-esteem, it's how you judge yourself as a human being, it's how you look at yourself. When money becomes that, then it becomes a problem because now you look at money as being your God. Now it's a problem when money becomes God. That's when it becomes a problem. But Jesus cares about the bag though. So how do we manage these two conflicts, right? And we're going to talk about how Jesus cares about the bag. Money is just a tool. Um, I need somebody that like really loves Jesus to come down here and just like lift your hands and just scream, I love you, Jesus. No, no, just stand up and scream and hit it. Oh, I love Jesus! Okay, there we go. <laughs> there we go. I, 
<laughs> I said I thought everybody was about to run up, right? I, me too. Now I got me, got me a chick. I got a chick. Let's see. Need somebody to run up here and say, I want this money right now. I want this money right now. Now hurry up. I need people down here running down. Run down. Oh, hey. Okay. Okay. Hey. I'm about to do like they do at the club. All right, go sit down, go sit down, go sit down, go sit down, go sit down. Gee. Oh. Oh, all right. <laughs> now, 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 I feel like I don't even have to say anything about what just happened here, right? Like, I feel like I don't have to preach on that. But you all just saw what happened, right? This is only $25. (laughs) This is is just cash. Like, this is nothing. This This is nothing. Now... Now check this, check this, check this, check this. We said, I need somebody that really loves Jesus to come down front and just yell, I love you, Jesus. Now this is at church. I mean, we, we all, you know, we're here at church. And I had two people, two young ladies come up. I said, who wants $25? And I felt like I was at a concert. Like, I could have jumped on the crowd. They would have held me up. Like, I felt like, like, people don't, I mean, he dropped his whole credit card. People jumping up and down over, (laughs) over some paper. This just kind of shows us, then I, then I'm like, I am started ripping and you hearing it, tearing it up. <laughs> oh my God. The, the, know how much Chick-fil-A I could get with that? Like, it's, y'all, this kind of shows us your relationship with money. Right? Like, this can show us our relationship with money. Um, because this is just paper, you can take this back. And, it, and, and it's going to be just fine. Now, if I rip it again, you won't, you won't. see, <laughs> but, the, but the reactions that we're getting, <laughs> yeah, who got a lighter? Who got a lighter? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but the reactions that we get over money shows us the relationship that we have with money versus our relationship that we have with Jesus. I ain't going to lie. I was like Taharia. I was confused. Like, she looked back like, I thought everybody was about to be running up here. Like, hold on, what are everybody doing? And I kind of felt the same way. Like, I thought it was going to be more than two. But we see the relationship here. This ain't to make nobody feel bad. I just want to just do an example, just so that we can talk about it. Uh, Let's turn to Luke 16, 13 through 15. This has been our scripture throughout the entire series. And this is just like the introduction And then um, we really going to get into it as the weeks go by. Luke 16, verse 13. No one can serve two masters. It says no one can serve two masters. Now, this is Jesus talking. Anytime it's in the red, it means they highlighted that to say this is Jesus talking. Jesus said that you can't serve two masters. He said that there ain't no playing sides. He said there ain't no two bosses. Like, it's one or the other, okay? He says it's impossible to have two masters, okay? Now, what is Jesus about to talk about here, right? Like, you can't serve God and the devil, right? Like, that's what he's talking about. You can't serve God and the devil. That's what you would think he's talking about. But that's not what he's talking about. It's not what he's talking about. Let's keep on reading. 
Either you will hate the one and love the other. Or you will be devoted to one and despise the other. You cannot serve both God and the devil. Oh, wait. That don't say the devil. That says you can't serve God and money. He didn't. I would think that Jesus would say right there, you can't serve God and the devil. But he didn't even put, he said his competition isn't even, is not even with the devil. The competition is against the bag. Because people oftentimes make the bag their God. We're just going to get into this a little more. Um, it says... Where are we at? I lost my son. Okay, it says, you have a question. Uh, where am I at? Talk louder. That it's not necessarily money that's his competition, but how people get money that's his competition. How people get money? Mm -hmm. um, that's a good question. I don't, think it's, I don't think it's necessarily how people get money. I think it's where people put money. Right? And we're going to talk about that. That's a very good question, though, young lady. I like that. Brie, Brielle. Okay. That's a good question. Then it says this. So it was three words. You got a question? Where my mic running at? Where my mic running over here? Where you at? Where you at? Well, you got to run, bro. There we go. What you got? What about your dad and your mom or your parents? Like, can you serve your parents and God or just like? That's a good question. Can you serve your parents and God? So we about to break down what this scripture actually means because Jesus also says something else that's really wild. He says that you must hate your parents over him. Oh, my goodness. It said, when it comes to the relationship, some of y'all are like, yes. <laughs> like, no, 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 no. You're thinking about it wrong. Um, and we're going to break down the scripture a little more because it's going to give some clarity. I saw another hand back there. Yes. What we got? I don't think he meant like you can't love both your parents and your mom because you can always love somebody. It's like, I don't know how to explain it. You can only like serve him, but you can love people too. Like you can love him and too. So So this is man, that clap was weird. That was weird. Y'all on that weird stuff. Um we got one up here? Let me get one up here. I think that um that reference is just like an interpretation of like the level. I don't think uh, Jesus, was it Jesus that says that uh, to hate your parents? Yeah, I'm, I'm going to actually pull up the scripture. Okay, yeah, okay. I, think, um, I think that's more so like don't, not actually hating your parents, but on a level <laughs> like, you know, I'd be like on a scale from one to ten, that spectrum, there's still bad on there because one would be bad and ten would be great, right? It's like on a scale, like if there was two scales, one were for your parents and how much you love them and then vice versa for God, um, hate would be that one. So it's like the comparison, you should love God this much over how much you love your parents. Not saying that you don't still love your parents, but you should <laughs> love uh, God infam infamously much more than you would love your parents to where if you were to look at that relationship, someone on the outside looking in would say, would think that in comparison to your relationship with God. I like that. That's really good. That's, that's solid. Um, that's solid. Luke chapter 14, verses 26 said this. Because you all never just want to believe what 
anybody just saying to you, right? Just because I'm up here and I'm saying something don't mean that you need to believe it, right? You should be asking, like, show that to me in the scripture, right? Like, prove it, right? And then see what the Bible says about it, all right? Don't, they even say anytime a pastor's lips is moving, he's probably lying, okay? So, like, you should just be, you should just be aware of what people are saying. Don't just go for it, okay? But this is what it says. If anyone, if any man come to me and hate not his father or mother and wife and children and brother and sisters, yea, even his own life also, he cannot be my disciple. So he didn't just say, you got to hate your parents. Like, he told me I got to hate my mom and my dad, my beautiful wife, my sons, <laughs> and my own life, right? So then that, then that should lead to another question, right? Well, what does the word hate mean? Like, what is it saying? Because when I think of hate, like, I'm thinking of, like, I'm about to knock you out. Like, I, I don't like you. Like, like, I'll cut you. Like, something, like, I'm, I'm thinking of other things. Um, but in this scripture, let's look up what these words mean. Hate. The first definition of hate means this, because either you will hate one and love the other, or you will be devoted to one and despise the other. So we have the word hate, we have the word devoted, and we have the word despise, hate, love someone or something less than someone or something else. So it just means just what he was saying. It's the levels. Like Jesus must be at this level in comparison to your parents, to your money, to your family, to your children. Like when somebody looks, they should be able to see, oh, this person loves Jesus way more than they do their wife. And that's what makes somebody actually a good spouse. I love God way more than Eliza. Like, way more than her. Actually, if it was the opposite way around, we would have a bad relationship. We would have a bad relationship. Because she loves God way more than me. Yeah, it's an infatuation. It's almost like you make the relationship God. Somebody, it got to have levels, right? And so the reason I trust my wife and she trusts me is because I love God way before I loved her. I was keeping myself saved. I mean, not having sex before marriage, before I met her. So I'm not going to step out and cheat on her because I love God. Do you love God? What's wrong with you? And since I love God so much, she's safe. She's secure. She's okay. Even if, even if she sees me texting another girl about something, she's not, let me see your phone. What you doing? Nah, 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 nah. No, she's like, oh, what y'all talking about? Oh, no, we're talking about that. Oh, okay, cool. If she goes to, she can get my phone right now and start looking through it, and I don't have no worries. I ain't scared. Go through my DMs. I ain't even on Instagram. So, right? Like, because God got me. I'm, I'm connected to him. Now, do I do stupid stuff? No, right? Like, but at the end of the day, you have to love God, and he has to be the number one over everything else. Because some parents ain't always good parents. In a sense of some parents have told their children, you know, to go steal from this person, go rob from this person. Go sell this for me. Go do this. Go do that. You know, go lay down with him for some money. Go do, you know, like some parents do that type of stuff. And the Lord, the Lord is saying pretty much like, yo, yo, at the end of the day, what am I saying? And if God is saying that this is wrong, you got to, I love God more than I do my mom. So I'm not going to obey what my mom's telling me in that area. Because if I obey her, then I'm disobeying him. And so you just, it's the levels. Okay. So he's not saying actually hate like that. Okay. Number two, we have devoted. This one is good. I like this word devoted. It says to hold firmly to, to cleave to, to hold firmly to. I, oh, I put that twice. Okay. When you're devoted to something or someone, you do certain things for that person or that thing. 
Let me give you an example. Since I am devoted to God, I'm not about to just be out here lying to people. I'm devoted to him. My devotion is to God. So that means I'm not just about to be watching crazy stuff on TV, right? I'm not about to just be watching wild stuff on Netflix or movies like I walk out of a movie theater if it's getting too much for me because I'm devoted to him, right? If you're devoted to money, what does that look like? What does that look like? Give me some, if you're devoted to money, give me some action steps that somebody would do. And it's like, oh, I could tell he's devoted to money because they do this. Maybe I'm not asking this right. Yes. You got to move, Noah. She too far to be passing. So like, okay, so like for some people, they care more about like name brand things and what they look like and how much they spend on this and they want to flex it and show it off. So like, I feel like if you wearing uh, like a rep, you know what reps are? Yeah. If you wearing reps, you care more about what you look like, which means like you're more <laughs> devoted to money than to actually like anything else. So you promoting reps out here. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, no, I get what you're saying. I get what you're saying. Um, Kayla, right here. Uh, oh, we got one right here. Oh. On? Okay, there he goes. Um, yeah, he's good. Um, I was going to say, like, you can tell when someone's devoted money if they get mad when, like, you know how parents used to, like, well, my parents don't anymore, but some parents pay ch um, their children to do chores. So, like, if they don't get paid, they're like, where my money at? I'm supposed to be paid. Ah, so they're going to get mad. Temper tantrum. Yeah. And it's also for, like, a job, too. So it's like if you feel like you weren't paid enough for the work you did, if you did something extra and your job only pays you, like, half the credit, you can get ma they can get mad over that, meaning they care about the money more than um, what they did to the, for the work. I like that. Here's a couple other ways. I like that a lot. Here's a couple other ways that you can tell somebody is devoted to it, right? Um, somebody that steals money, you're devoted to it. You go into somebody's locker room, in a locker, and you're taking stuff from them? Or, like, I ain't going to lie. Can I just be honest? Like, I used, to, I used to be a kleptomaniac. I used to, I used to, I, I used to enjoy stealing, right? Which showed, which showed that actually what was more important to me was money more so than God. Even if I would steal other things like shoes, that means that I cared more about shoes with ultimately you get shoes through money. It all goes back to the root, which is money. And so it shows your devotion. Like when you all get older, there's something that adults have to do. And it's called you have to pay taxes, right? It's called paying taxes, right? Where the government wants a piece of your money. And at the beginning of the year, you do your taxes and you file your taxes. And sometimes you can get money back, right? Or you have to pay money. It depends on if you own your own business or if you work for somebody else. Regardless, this is another way to show if you love money or not when people do their taxes wrong to get more money. When they lie on their taxes, it's showing, oh, I'm trying to get over on the system, which means I love money more than I do God. So we got to be aware of this type of stuff, right? We got to be a devotion, devotion. Um, and then despise, despise. It says to condemn, to despise, to disdain, to little, to think little of. When we need something in life, and I'm talking about a need, right? Like, when we need something in life, say that you need, what's a need? What's a need? No, 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 not like, not like the essential needs, but like, say you need to, say you need to go to school. You need to, you need a car. Say you need a car, right? What is the first thing What is your first way 
to try to obtain that vehicle. Say what? No, no, no. Okay, good one, good one. He said you got to what? You have to save first, right? Oftentimes, now, I'm somebody that I ain't going to lie. I love saving. I love investing. I love handling my money correctly. Because God cares about the bag, and we've seen this earlier in the scripture, because he talks about stewardship. If you cannot steward worldly wealth good, how can you inherit the riches of the kingdom of God? Right? So God is saying money is important because I'm able to judge you and give you more based on what you're doing with what you have. However, it's, it can be very problematic when we go to money to provide our needs more than God to provide our needs. For example, oh, <laughs> Denard, <laughs> Denard, get that person, please. <laughs> When our first, and this is something that I deal with even myself, right? When our first option is money's going to provide it for me, instead of praying about that and getting in my prayer closet and talking to God about it, it shows me which one I think is my provider. It shows me, mm, I got to work more. Mm, I got to get a side hustle. Mm, I got to go Uber. Mm, I got to go sell this. Mm, I got, instead of talking to God. Now, are any of those things wrong? No. 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 Actually, you should be engaging in business opportunities at you all's age. You should be finding outside of those. You should be. But it becomes problematic. Yo, Chaz, get them together over here, please. The worries of this life. Well, what are some of the things that people worry about in life? Successful, failing, what else? What people think about you and you measure that based off of what? Your clothes, 
your cars. What people worry, what do people worry about in life? Other people's perception of you, right? And people base their perception of you a lot of times based off of your physical and what you look like, what you got on, things of this nature, right? So worries of this life, number one. But then it said this, the deceitfulness of wealth. What makes money deceitful? And I was like, Lord, what makes money deceitful? What makes money deceitful is because you end up believing that that is going to be your all in all and your go-to, and it's going to provide for you, it's going to protect you, it's going to, it's going to give you everything that you need. It deceives you till you end up, money can play God, where you end up believing that this is actually God because if I get enough of this, then I'm going to be good in life. If I get enough of that, then, then I'll be secure. Then I could get my mama a house, and then I, could, I ain't never got to work again, and, and I'll be straight my entire life once this is secure. And he, the Lord is saying, yo, that's the deceitfulness of money because what is money? Paper. Paper. How does it, this is paper. This is really, this is like, God is saying this. Okay. God showed me um, about a year and a half ago, I went through this long uh, journey in my life, right? Like, I, I love business, you know, I love entrepreneurship. That's something I do. You know, I, I like that type of stuff, right? God showed me that I love money. And, and he told my wife that one time a while ago. He was like, yeah, Nehemiah, you know, trust in money. And she brought that to me. She was like, yeah, Nehemiah, the Lord was just showing me that, you know, you really trust in money more than him. I'm like, what? Girl, who you talking to? Like, nah, you tripping. Like, I love God. You bugging. Like, I, my life is for God. Da, da, da. I'm like... And she's like, whoa, like, chill. I'm just telling you what I... Now, nah, you ain't hearing right from the Lord. You clearly ain't hearing right. You hearing this type of stuff. Like, what you doing, you know? Um, <laughs> then a couple months later, when I was praying, the Lord showed me, you love money and trust in money more than you do me. And I'm like, whoa, like, Lord, that's not true. I'm telling God, he's lying, right? Like, I'm telling God, he's lying. And this is literally how it was happening. I was in my bed. And I'm like, nah, that's not true, God, because, dang, I'm bugging me doing that, thinking about it now. I'm like, that's not true, God, because even when I need something, right, I, um, I, I pray to you about providing the money so that I can get it, right? Like, I, I know I said I pray to you, so that you can provide the money so that I can get. And he said, exactly. You pray to me about the money. I'm like, crap. I, I, I repent. I had a whole, like, cry session in my room. Like, I was, no, I'm serious. Like, it hit me really deep. It hit me really, really deep because the Lord said, and I'm like, and then it hit me. Boom. Yes, I go to God about the money to provide it, but ultimately if I'm going to God for the money, that means that the money is actually my God. Instead of going to God for that item or whatever it, whatever it is I really need, I'm going to Him about the money. And so that led me on this long journey of the Lord freeing me from trusting in money more than Him. And He started giving me little assignments and, and testing me in certain ways. And it was this one time where me and Eliza, it was our anniversary. And we went to this hotel, uh, like a really nice hotel too. Like it was fancy. I ain't going to lie. It was, it was really fancy. And most hotels I'm used to going, like you get free breakfast. So we went downstairs. <laughs> you know, I'm looking good. I'm spiffy. <laughs> you know, we go, yeah, babe, let's go eat real quick. Yeah, I got you, girl. Yeah, I got you. <laughs> right. And they like, um, we go down there, and um, they're like, yes, yeah, two people. I'm like, yeah, just two, us two. Uh -huh. She was like, okay. Um, I think she, I, 
it was like $60 a person. And I'm like, what? For breakfast? Like, man, at Waffle House, man, $60 can get me a lot at Waffle House. Like, I can eat really, and you know how many all-stars I can get at Waffle House? Like, I could get mad all-stars at Waffle House, right? And so I'm like, man, we already paid a grip <laughs> to get the hotel, and $60 a person, like, man, that's for breakfast. We ain't even talking about lunch or dinner yet. Like, we ain't do no activities yet or nothing. I'm like... Hey, babe, like, mm, uh, you know, let's go somewhere else. You know, I ain't really feeling this spot. You know? <laughs> you know, they ain't treating us good here. Let's go somewhere else. But we're leaving, right? We're leaving, and the Lord checked my heart. And he said, go talk to the lady at the front desk. And I'm like, okay. I said, hey, ma'am. I'm like, yeah, God about to come through for me, right? That's what I'm thinking, God about to come through. I go to the desk. I'm like, ma'am. Um, yeah, the breakfast, I thought that the breakfast was like complimentary when you stay here. And she was like, oh, let me check the system real quick. Um, Mr. Ray? Um, oh, Mr. Ray. Oh, and then her face just turned like, <laughs> oh, you didn't even book through us? You went through a third, I think we went through like Hopper or something like that to book it, right? We went through it. She said, if you were to book through us, maybe I could do something for you, but you booked through a third party, next time book through us. And I'm like, ah, oh, uh, okay. Thought I was good money. And then I saw something. I saw the Lord really do something crazy. I saw him really change her entire countenance where she was first upset and then everything switched. And she said, you know what? Here's two free complimentary that you all could go to the breakfast today, you know? And this is what made that amazing. I don't, I don't care about getting things from God. I don't care about, like, receiving blessings when it comes to, like, material things from God or stuff like that. Um, I care more about God, right? Like, that's what I care more about. But what made that so meaningful to me is because I didn't have to use money in order to get that. God was able to make that happen without the money by touching somebody's heart. And that really just started to solidify my thought process even more. Don't trust in money, trust in me. Don't trust in money, trust in me. And that really started to change some stuff in my life and it really shifted some things, but in the scripture it said this, that the deceitfulness of trusting in wealth caused this person to be unfruitful. How does it become unfruitful? Because it smothers out God in the equation. I'm saying this so many times over and over and over again because I really want you all to understand that when you put your trust in this, and that is your number one, God is no longer your number one. God must be number one in every aspect of our life, even when it comes to our finances. When it comes to the bag, I know that's all we hear about. There's a, there's a Christian label that said God over money. Like, that's the whole thing, God over money. And I love that saying because that is actually a difficult place to get to, to saying God over this, right? God over this. Okay, y'all didn't, <gasps> this time, maybe y'all growing a little bit, right? All right. God over this. This is nothing. God is everything. Because what we're going to do when the dollar fails you know, after World War II, in Germany, they started bringing boatloads of cash out. Everybody had a whole bunch of cash, and they were using it as toilet paper. They were using it to warm themselves, to burn fires, because the money became useless. I don't know if you all know anything about what's happening to the U.S. dollar right now, or what's happening with China, and how they're starting to back their stuff with gold. And we aren't. What are we going to do when this actually becomes nothing where we can't buy stuff with it? Then what does your trust turn to? 
<laughs> you better have your trust already in the true and living God that he will protect, he will provide, he will secure, he will do everything that he needs to do for his children that put their trust in him. David said, I've never seen the righteous forsaken or begging bread. We got to get right in our mindset when it comes to this. And you prove that by how you handle it, not wasting it. And we'll talk more about that as we get going. But what I want to do right now is this. We talked about money a whole bunch, and we did talk about God. But the most important thing is to ensure that you are, number one, you get a relationship with him.